Shalom, this is Rabbi Peter from Congregation Mishkan Ahamu. We're speaking a little bit about the mystery of the tabernacle. I didn't come here thinking, okay, what would be a good thing to share today? Let me explain something. There is a war against Torah. There is a war against the law of God. There is a war against what they refer to as the Mosaic law. Which is really interesting because a Mosaic law, I don't understand, this was not the law of Moses. This is the law of God that he gave through Moses. Moses didn't sit down to write these things down because he thought it was a good idea. These are the commandments of God that he gave through Moses. It's not Moses' commandments. It's our Father's commandments. And the mystery of this thing that has been cast aside is that the Torah is the, 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 the code of Yeshua. It's as if you're a computer programmer and you put this elaborate code together and nobody wants to read it because it's too weird and too complicated and it makes no sense. But if there is one slash that's forward and it's supposed to be backwards or if there's a comma missing or one dot or anything that's missing from that code that the programmer establishes, when you hit play, it will not work. It cannot work. And when you press play and it doesn't work, the, the, the designer goes and says, wait a minute, did you look at the code? No, we don't need the code. We got grace now. We don't need no code. The code is for yesteryear. And the designer says, what are you talking about? The program doesn't work without the code. It don't matter how much you pray, it will not work without the code. And so somebody has enough sense to say, I know we're under grace. I know God loves us. I know all that. But can somebody please check because the code doesn't seem to be doing what it was supposed to do. And you know it because we're still praying for sick people. We're still praying because people die. We're still praying for mental disease. So the code, let's be real, the code is not working as it's supposed to be. For he said it, if you believe, signs and wonders will follow you. And we are sons of the living God. We're sons and daughters of God. And we believe these things. Why are we seeing the miracles? Why, and and, and I, I, okay, oh, I saw somebody healed last year. We're supposed to see people healed every day. We ought to be able to walk into a, a, just drive down the street and keep looking for, where's the next hospital? Walk in and make an announcement. Get the PA system. I got to make an announcement, folks. Uh, yeah. All your, all your nurses, all your doctors, you better look for yourselves for another job because this hospital is about to close. And before the, 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 you know, they bring the cops to get you out of there, you just say, hey, you, you're not even going to say in Jesus' name. You're going to speak as Jesus and you say, be healed. And everybody will get off their beds and that hospital will have to shut down, turn itself into something else. This is the heritage of the sons and daughters of God. So the code is not working. Everything our elder brother did, we are supposed to do and greater. I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied. <laughs> But holding the fort till Jesus comes. Let me tell you something. We are the manifestation of the living God on earth. <laughs> he comes when you're awakened to the reality. He's here. He could never leave because he's omnipresent. <laughs> if he has to come, it means he's somewhere else. That means he's not here. And if he's not here, he's not God because he's omnipresent. In all time, at the same time. He was in the beginning as he is in the end. Sometimes in order to understand our time, we have to go back in time. You see, this week, in this week's Torah portion, the whole thing is about the tabernacle. And it's about the high priest. Wah, 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 wah. And then you're going to have the columns. And the bottom of the columns has to be this. And the poles have to be that. And it has to be purple, red, and, and, and blue. And, then you get, and, then, and Moses, you better do it right because if you don't, I'll kill you. Yeah. You see, the pattern has to be right. You see, Aaron found out that the pattern has to be right on the first day on the job. His boys, first day on the job. Hallelujah. 
up, psh, dead. End of story. And, 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 and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, I don't want this job anymore. You know, he looks so fancy, you know, he comes out decorative, you know, with, with a fancy jewel. It's all fun and games until someone pokes an eye out. And this time they drop dead, so he's not fancy anymore. Now he's got mascara running down his eyes, he's like, oh my God, my kids. And he wants to pick up his kids off the floor, and Moses says, don't touch them. Let somebody else take them out, you have a job to do. And he had to continue his job as high priest, realizing God is establishing a pattern that none of our human screw-ups are going to mess him up. We either better do it the way he said it, or we drop dead. So what are the bells for again? Make sure they're ringing, because the moment they stop ringing, you're dead. I don't want the job. I don't want the job. I don't want the job. And we don't understand this. We think, we think, wow, this is the... God, they had anger management issues. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God somewhere along the way he took some Prozac or whatever he did. Because in the New Testament he does sat his behind right down. Oh, thank God. Everything is nice and smooth now. Man, thank goodness he went to counseling, got it all straightened out. Killing people. He killed the guy because he was making a fire on Shabbat. Dead! Oh, God. Thank goodness. Man, Jesus, talk to your father, man. He's got to calm down. Take the Jill Peel. Settle down. Glory. Oh, my God. You know, the funny thing is, in the New Testament, there are things happening that were harsher than what happened in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, nobody ever dropped dead because they promised to give an offering and then didn't give it. Nobody. There's, there's even a commandment about that. In Ananias and Sapphira, New Testament, age of grace, we gave it all. Drop dead. They're carrying her husband now. She's like, what happened to him? He lied about what you gave. But we gave it all. Drop dead. Where is that in the Torah? Where is that in the Torah? It doesn't even exist. It's not even a commandment. It's the, and Yeshua is saying, the Torah says, if you commit adultery, blah, blah, blah. But if I say, if you think it, you're already committed. He's putting it into a level that is impossible for humans to keep. And we are in an age and a time where the opposite is being taught to God's children. We don't need this nonsense. We just need to hang in there and wait for Jesus to come and get us on out of here. <laughs> and we don't realize God is preparing an army <laughs> Of sons and daughters who are walking in the manifestation of Yeshua himself. <laughs> He's preparing us. And the preparation, the code, the code is the Torah. Because the word says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. The man who said this was a rabbi. In fact, he was a Levite. This is John. And at that time, the only word that they referred to as the word is the Torah. It's the same thing that David referred to when he said, your word is a lamp unto my feet. He wasn't talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. That didn't even exist. He's talking about the Torah, which is the only thing. That God spoke face to face to a man. The Torah is the code of Yeshua. It is the reason why in the scriptures it says that you cannot sacrifice a lamb unless the lamb is one year old. Why? Because a one year old lamb has gone through the entire cycle of a Torah all the way around the year. Because the Torah is divided through all the Shabbat around the year. So that lamb has gone through the festivals. He's gone through all the Shabbat. You cannot sacrifice a lamb that's younger than one year because it means he didn't get the complete code. And the complete code is Yeshua. So this week, what's the code talking about? This week we're on the page that has to do with the tabernacle. This is the pattern of the tabernacle. So precise that God said to Moses, if you miss one measurement, if there's anything that is added to or taken away from the pattern I've given you, you will drop dead. I'm going to raise somebody else who will do it exactly the way I told them. Why? Because when you're setting up a pattern... The pattern has to be perfect because a pattern is used for the many that will come afterwards. Somewhere along the way, somebody had the idea of making these pants. 
And they didn't just make these pants. They thought about making the pants. And the first step to making the pants is you have to make a pattern. Because the pattern of the pants aren't the pants themselves. The pattern is longer on the hems and all the, all the things. Everything is there, but it's a pattern. And you're not going to use the pattern to, to, to wear. You're going to use the pattern to make a duplicate and multiply the, the pants. And they all fit perfectly well. Now somebody had to say, glory, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. But about this time, he says, what does this have to do with pants? It has everything to do with pants. Because this is a pattern of a greater thing. So, my God. Okay, this, oh, oh, okay, this, is, this is where you bring the sins, the altar... Cracks me up, people still having altar calls. I never understand it. See, the altar call is not for the people who sin. The altar call is for the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. The, the lamb comes to the altar so that you don't have to. But it's okay. It's going to be all right. No, no, you cannot bring any animal past this because the sins stop here. The, the waste, the, it's, it cannot enter. Okay? After that, then you, you have the laver of water. And this is where you, 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 the priest would bathe himself. He used to just water to do all the ceremonial things in, in the tabernacle. And then after that, there's a little curtain. And then there's bread. And then there's a lampstand. And it has to be here and there. You can't say, well, I don't like this decoration style. We need to change it up a little bit. It has to be where it's supposed to be. And then over here in the middle, right here in this area, you have this incense, a box with incense, and smoke is going into the whole place. And, All right, it's over there. And then there's another curtain, and here only one person can go in here. That's the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies, there's the Ark of the Covenant, and it's got the two tablets. And it actually had manna and Aaron's rod in there too. All right? And God gave this pattern to Moses exactly 40 weeks before the presence of God entered into the tabernacle. Which is the same exact moment of time that it takes for us to be built in our mother's womb. So it's a process of being conceived and then being born. Moses set everything and when he was done setting it up according to the pattern on that day the cloud of fire came down and filled the tabernacle with the glory of God well I don't know it's interesting but I still don't see any seats we need seats for the people to come in we need to you know, find a you know the crazy thing is nobody came in here? The only ones who came in this area were the priests. And the only one who went in here was the high priest. And now we're saying, take us into the holy, holy. Take us in my blood of lamb. Oh, my, what? You know, like, what's happening? We don't understand the pattern. So, how do we understand the past? We have to go to the future. You see, in the book of Revelation, and I'm not going to take you through the whole book of Revelation tonight, but I am going to bring you through just one little verse, Revelation 22, verse 13, and it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. All right, first of all, we've got a big problem. God has no beginning and no end. You see, you have to understand that the translators are limited to their understanding of what they perceive the author is writing. So, this was actually written in Greek, not because the author was Greek, but because at that time, the common language of the land was Greek. The Romans would make it write in Greek. So, it, it's written in Greek, but it makes no sense that the God of Israel would speak to a Hebrew Levite and that he would be speaking in Greek. That makes no logical sense. So, therefore... I've inserted the Alpha and the Omega. These are the two symbols. These are in the Greek 
the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. So let's see what it would look like if Yeshua is speaking in Hebrew. It would look a little bit different because the first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the Aleph and the Tav. You may say, well, what's the big difference? First and last letter, what does it mean? It means a lot because in Hebrew, letters are pictures that represent revelation in a word. Aleph and the Tav, that means something. Now, why is this so important? Because, you see, John, as a Hebrew, would have known that in the Torah... There are thousands of mystery Aleph Tavs that it's not a word, it has no grammatical value, it's there, they cannot take it out, and they don't know what it is. Yeah. Because it's not a word, the translators, when they translated all of our Bibles in English, in Greek, in Portuguese, in Spanish, in French, they could not put this word in the scripture because it's not a word that exists. So they simply omitted it from the text. What I'm going to do here is I am going to substitute Aleph Tav with a little heart. I'm going to do that because we all can relate to that, but this we still can't relate to because we're not used to seeing this little symbol here. You with me so far? Yes. Okay. This is Hebrew scripture from this week's Torah portion. This is the description of the tabernacle. And this is how you would see it. And as you can see, for most of us, this is not really easy to look at. We, it, the, the, nothing stands out. But what I have done is I have inserted the heart where all the Aleph Tav appears in this scripture. That's how often the Aleph Tav appears on the description of the tabernacle. Now, John would have known this exists, but he did not know what these hearts were until in the island of Patmos, Yeshua said, by the way, the great I am that you know of, like the one who spoke on the mountain, is the mystery Aleph Tav that you've read, but you did not know. So go back to your memory bank and start reading the scripture, knowing that there is more to the code than you realize, because now you know the mystery of the Aleph Tav. This is in English, you know, the tabernacle, its tent, and its covering, its clasps, its frames, its bonds, its pillars, and its bases. Amen. The ark and its poles and the atonement cover. And wah, 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 oh God, please. Some of you are saying, oh my God, I wish I was sitting next to the door because some people already got out. I'm in the wrong seat. <laughs> it's true. This is what you're reading. But let me show you something. Let me insert the Aleph Dav where it belongs in the English text. Wow. This is just eight verses of description and in eight verses there's 41 mystery Aleph Tavs appearing that have been removed I tell you the truth, there's more about Jesus in the Old Testament than you could ever fit in the New Testament and it was all removed by translators who had no idea what this meant when they started translating the word without leaving it intact as the Hebrew text has always been. Over 9,000 have been removed. I don't know if I can answer a question. Will you read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 let, so let me read it. So let me read it. This is, okay, so, so because we relate with... Now we know what the heart is. What's the heart? The heart is... Aleph Tav. Aleph Tav is who? Jesus. Jesus. Yeshua. Jesus. Jesus. Glory, Jesus. Amen. Ready? You with me? It begins. Jesus, the tabernacle. Jesus, its tent. And Jesus, its covering. Jesus, its clasps. What is he saying? Every single thing in the tabernacle is Jesus. So the pattern has to be perfect because this is the pattern of Jesus. And if you screw up the pattern of Jesus, how are you going to have the kingdom authority at the end of the age when you're supposed to be transformed into Jesus? 
This is why there's war against this thing in religion. This is why there's war against this thing in church. Because the Satan does not want you to understand this. Because this is the code that will transform you into the very thing he thought he defeated at the cross. And he should have never killed him because the moment he killed him, he went into the ground and came up and began to multiply himself. But a religious system will tell you that, oh, he's in heaven preparing a building for you. And then he's coming to take you out of here. And don't pay attention to this because this ain't, they ain't for you anyways, for the Jew. And so just hang in there. Hold the fork because Jesus coming. Hold the fork. I mean, thing. Hold the fork. Like, what is happening? God is preparing an army of sons and daughters. That's right. Amen. The first Adam gave authority to the enemy. That's why everything in creation is dying. We are here to restore that which belongs to our Father. And let me tell you something. There's something inside of you that was not touched in the garden. You know why? Because Adam never ate from the tree of life. The tree of life is the Torah code of Messiah. And this, which is unlawful for humans to hear, it's lawful for you to hear because you're not a man. You're a new creation. Not a renewed creation, a new creation. Something that was not formed in the Garden of Eden. Because when Adam was formed, he did not have Torah inside of him. He would have, if he would have ate from the tree of life, he never touched it, which means that never entered humanity. So that was untarnished, waiting for a season that someone will say, I'll eat it. And this day you said it, this is a rabbi who's eaten the Torah, and it is true. This is why the words that come out of my mouth are trustworthy. This is why I don't teach doctrines. Uh, this is why I don't have memberships. This is why I can go to the ends of the world. I don't care where I go because where I go, I go where my father sends me because I'm not going there because I'm a human trying to get some converts. I'm the son awakening my brothers and my sisters. The Isle of Tav, as I shared earlier, this is a symbol of a sacrificial bull. It is the bull that gets sacrificed on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year. And Tav, well, do I have to explain to you what that is? Yes, please. Uh, oh, I do? Yes, you do. And the old Rocky Cross. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of crosses in the Old Testament. <laughs> they took all the old Rocky Crosses out of the Old Testament. <laughs> oh, Lord. So what does that mean? What he's saying is, I am the beginning of the sacrificial system and I'm the completion. This whole thing fell apart and the only way to restore it was for me to be the beginning. All the lambs, all the bulls, all the bloody things that happen. And I am the completion here. It's complete. What are, what are those symbols? I mean, so, they're not... Greek, not Hebrew. This is Hebrew. This is the original Hebrew. But I show it just so you see the picture because the mystery is in the picture. And actually, amazingly, in the in the movie The Ten Commandments, you know, Salston Hester, if if you if you look <laughs> look at when the fire goes onto the stones and it's writing the commandment, and amazingly, the, the text that they write on the commandment is the old text. It's not the modern day Hebrew, which is amazing. Someone actually thought about that. Look at it, Google it, check it out, you, you know, YouTube it. Now that we know what that is. And we know that the description of the tabernacle has this in front of every single thing in the tabernacle. If the Aleph Tav is infused in the pattern of something that's greater, a pattern so important that you would drop dead if you messed it up, then maybe, maybe we ought to ask God to give us a spiritual vision to understand. So what is this? Maybe, wow. maybe the waste, the thing that the 
does not do any good to the body, it's here and it gets taken out. That's the sin, the waste. Uh, above the waste is, is the labor of water. Jesus said, I have water you know not of, and, and rivers of living water will flow from your innermost being. Th th there, there's your water. Now we enter into another area. This is the holy place. In the holy place, this is the heart. The heart is right next to the bread because the bread of life. Bread is the word. The word is written in our, come on, somebody. And we know the, the lampstand is the light, and the light represents life. And then the life goes in the blood, pumped to the whole body, and it's shouting to the whole body. And then all of a sudden, as we continue up, before we enter into the holy of holies, there's this little place over here in the voice box. And the incense represents the prayers of the saints. Okay, so, so, so this is the prayers that go up. Incidentally, when Yeshua died, see, the prayers couldn't pass through, but now the veil has been ripped, so the prayers are translated in spirit and go directly to the Father. So anyway, over in here, in the Holy of Holies, only one came into the Holy of Holies. Hello, Yeshua, who's the high priest. Only he belongs up in here. This is why it says we have the mind of Christ. You have to hear the voice of God as one in this place. And amazingly, our mind is divided into two parts. One part of the mind has to do with musical, spiritual, emotional things. The other part of the mind has to do with logical numbers, things. Very much so, the, the Ten Commandments have. Part of it is, has to do with the commandments of God. And the last six have to do with humanity. Don't steal the honor your parents. Away. And there's one, one, the fourth one that connects both the, the, the human part and the God part, which is the fourth commandment. It's the commandment that is the door, because in Hebrew, four is a door. And, and, and Yeshua said, Behold, I'm standing at the door and I knock so that I will sup with him. It's his invitations. Come celebrate Shabbat with me. It's not a religious thing, not a salvation thing. Just come celebrate, because on that day, I'm going to reveal more of my bread to you. And when all of this was lined up perfectly, the glory of God came in the center. That's why our brain cannot have anything in the center, because the thing that belongs in the very center of our brain is the presence of the Father. Jesus. This is why we cannot speak against one another, because you're not speaking against a human who has problems. You're speaking against a tabernacle of God that at this present time is busted up and held together barely with duct tape. But the high priest is in that broken vessel to restore and repair and align everything according to the pattern of who he himself is. <laughs> 